Hello, my name is Kesha, and I'll be presenting our paper, A Verified Optimizer for Quantum Circuits. Quantum computing is becoming a reality, with a range of commercial quantum computers available for public use. Here's a picture of one of IBM's early prototypes. Programming quantum computers promises to be very different from programming classical computers. For starters, quantum programs are inherently probabilistic. Quantum algorithms are designed to output a useful answer with high probability, but may sometimes produce an undesired result. Quantum programs are also currently written at a low level of abstraction, typically as circuits, as shown here and described later in the talk. These circuit programs use different types of operations from standard classical programs. For example, along with quantum primitives like the H gate and measurement, the circuit shown here uses the idea of a controlled operation and performs an inverse quantum Fourier transform treated as a black box. Due to these differences and others, quantum programming is typically regarded as unintuitive. And quantum programming is only made more difficult by limitations of near-term machines. Current computers are small and error-prone, typically contain no more than 50 qubits and can run at most a few hundred two qubit gates before results are meaningless due to accumulated error. John Preskill has described this as the NISC, or noisy intermediate scale quantum era. Near-term machines also have restrictions on the types of programs they can run. For example, they can only perform certain technology dependent gates, and they often only allow two qubit gates between certain pairs of qubits. IBM's five qubit Yorktown machine, shown on the right, allows two qubit gates between qubits 0 and 1, but not between qubits 0 and 4. So quantum compilers need to take a program that was already difficult to write and then perform sophisticated optimizations to account for limited resources and hardware constraints. These optimizations are tricky to write and even harder to debug. An unexpected result when executing a quantum program could be due to a bug in the compiler or a bug in the program, or a machine error, or the result may be valid, just unlikely, due to the probabilistic nature of quantum programs. Here are the GitHub issue pages for three popular quantum programming frameworks, PyQuil, CERC, and Qiskit. As you can see, the community actively finds bugs in the programming stack, reinforcing our claim that this software is hard to get right. We propose to apply techniques from formal methods to eliminate bugs in the software stack. The end goal of our work is a verified compiler stack for quantum programs, starting from a high level language like Quipper or Microsoft's QSharp and compiling all the way down to hardware instructions. At each step, we aim to guarantee that the behavior of the program, its semantics, does not change. So far, we have focused on the intermediate level of the software stack where the most interesting optimizations and transformations occur. We work with an intermediate representation that describes a quantum program as a list of gates, as is standard. The verified compiler stacks for classical programs have seen recent success, which gives us hope that this is possible in the quantum setting too. However, existing tools for verifying transformations of classical programs do not directly apply to the quantum setting due to the fundamentally different semantics of quantum programs. In our paper, we present Vox, a verified optimizer for quantum circuits, which optimizes programs written in Squire, a small quantum intermediate representation designed for proof. We support translation between OpenCASM and Squire, allowing Vox to fit into existing unverified tool chains like IBM's quantum software stack. We implement and verify our optimizations in COC the Squire language and semantics with example programs is implemented in around three and a half thousand lines. Our Vox library for manipulating Squire programs and our verified optimizations are around seven and a half thousand lines. We build on top of the matrix and complex number libraries developed for the Squire project, extending them as needed with new lemmas and automation. The long version of our paper is available on archive. Our code is available on GitHub and our artifact, which includes a virtual machine with dependencies pre-installed and Squire and Box pre-compiled, is available on Zenodo.
I will begin with an introduction to quantum programming before I move on to the core of our paper, which is the Squire language in the Vox optimization library. A pure quantum state can be represented as a two-dimensional complex vector with unit length. The one zero vector is often called the zero state, and the zero one vector is called the one state. An arbitrary quantum state can be viewed as a combination of these two states. Measuring a qubit will probabilistically return zero or one and collapse the state accordingly. The probability of each outcome is determined by the corresponding entry in the vector. For example, given the quantum state shown here, there is a probability of one half of measuring zero and collapsing to the zero state, and a probability of one half of measuring one and collapsing to the one state. This state, which is a uniform superposition of the zero and one states, is typically called the plus state. Along with measuring states, we can also transform them using unitary operations. As an example, the Hadamard gate transforms the zero gate, the zero state to the plus state, and the plus state back to the zero state. Recall that the zero and plus states are two-dimensional vectors, which suggests that the Hadamard operation is a two by two matrix. In fact, all unitary operations can be described by unitary matrices. A unitary matrix is a complex square matrix with the property that its conjugate transpose is also its inverse. This property ensures that unitary matrices preserve the unit length of input states. Multi-qubit states are constructed via the tensor product. This slide shows the product of the plus and zero states. As with measuring a single qubit, the probability of an outcome when measuring multiple qubits depends on the corresponding entry in the vector state. In this case, the result of measurement is the zero zero state with probability one half and the one one state with probability one half. Note that there is a relationship between the output qubits. They are guaranteed to be in the same state. So measuring one qubit actually determines the measurement result of the other qubit too. This is because this is an entangled state. Consider the plus zero state we saw previously. As we know, this state can be decomposed as a product of the plus and zero states. However, the state we considered on the previous slide cannot be similarly decomposed. Hence, the two states are entangled. The qubits are physically distinct, but mathematically inseparable. What this means for formal verification is that we cannot model state as we would in the classical setting with a simple map from variables to independent values, because the values of different variables may be related. Instead, we need to reason about a global state. Some unitary operations apply to multiple qubits. One example of a two qubit gate is the C naught or controlled knot gate. This gate is the quantum equivalent of an XOR gate and is used to create entanglement between qubits. On this slide, we show that applying a CNOT to the plus zero state produces the entangled state from the previous slide. In quantum computing, it is typical to fix a small set of unitary operations from which any other unitary can be constructed. In this talk, you will see the H and CNOT operations shown previously and the X and RZ operations shown here. Note that the RZ operation is parameterized by a real value theta. So far, we have seen pure quantum states, which are represented by unit length complex vectors. More generally, we may want to consider mixed states, which are statistical ensembles of pure states. We can use density matrices to describe both pure and mixed states. A density matrix is a Hermitian positive semi-definite trace one matrix constructed from its constituent pure states. For example, the density matrix on the left describes the pure zero state. The left angle bracket notation marks the adjoint or complex conjugate of the standard zero state. The density matrix on the right encodes the distribution above, which is the zero state with probability one half and the one state with probability one half. For our purposes, density matrices provide a convenient way to describe an arbitrary quantum state after measurement because they naturally encode the probability of different measurement outcomes. 
Quantum programs are often written as circuits. On this slide is a circuit with three qubits and three gates applied from left to right. On the left-hand side, we indicate that each input qubit is expected to be in the zero state. The box H represents a Hadamard gate on the first qubit, and the vertical line represents a CNOT gate. The arguments to a multi-qubit gate are usually distinguished as being a control or a target. Here we show the circuit from the previous slide, written as a list of gates and as a high-level program. Quill is Rigetti's intermediate representation, which was one source of inspiration for Squire, and PyQuill is Rigetti's framework for constructing Quill programs. The GHZ state function produces the Quill program on the left when given the list 0, 1, 2 as input. Like PyQuill, many quantum programming frameworks including CERC from Google, Qiskit from IBM, and academic languages Quipper and Quire, are really tools for describing and manipulating circuits. We follow this model in our design of Squire. Squire programs are simple lists of gates describing circuits, and we use the Cock host language to metaprogram. This brings me to Squire, our small quantum intermediate representation embedded in Cock. There are two variants of Squire, unitary Squire, which only allows applying unitary operations, and full square, which includes measurement. Unitary Squire is a simple language that consists of gate applications and sequencing. Squire programs are parameterized by a gate set and a dimension D of the global register. The dimension of the global register is the number of qubits in the system. We need this number to determine the size of the matrix that denotes the program. The semantics of a unitary square program is a 2 to the d by 2 to the d unitary matrix. The semantics of sequencing is matrix multiplication. Note that the product of unitary matrices is also unitary. If a gate application is well typed, its semantics is the relevant unitary matrix extended to the appropriate dimension by padding with identity matrices. For example, the semantics of applying an x gate to qubit q is a matrix constructed by a tensor product of the X matrix and identity matrices of the appropriate size. We say that a gate application is well typed if all arguments within bounds of the global register and no arguments are duplicated, which would violate the quantum no cloning theorem. If a gate application is ill typed, we define its semantics to be the zero matrix. Full Squire includes skip, sequencing, unitary subprograms, and branching measurement. The command mezq p1 p2 measures qubit q and either performs program p1 or p2 depending on the result. Formally, the semantics of a full Squire program is a function over density matrices. Skip is an identity function, sequencing is function composition, and the semantics of a unitary subprogram is defined using the unitary semantics from the previous slide. Finally, the interesting case, the semantics of measurement is a sum of two terms. The first term is the result of applying P2 in the case where qubit Q is collapsed to the zero state. The second term is the result of applying program P1 in the case where qubit Q is collapsed to the one state. Note that this density matrix-based semantics is standard and has been used in other settings, like the quantum horror logic and the choir language. For the rest of this presentation, I will focus on unitary square, because this is where we spent most of our effort. Although square itself is a simple language, we can still write interesting programs by relying on the host language. Here's an example of a cock function that constructs an n qubit square program that prepares the GHZ state, which is a superposition of the n qubit zero state and the n qubit one state. GHZ is a recursive cock function that applies a Hadamard gate to the first qubit in the base case and applies a CNOT between two adjacent qubits in the recursive case. The return type says that the output is a unitary square program, or UCOM, that uses our default gate set base and n qubits. Because square is embedded in cock, we can also formally reason about the GHZ program. For example, 
we can prove that it actually produces the GHG state as we have claimed. First, we provide a clock definition of the GHG state. Then we say that applying the GHG program to the n qubit zero state produces this GHG state. The proof proceeds by induction on n. Although Squire's syntax and semantics are simple, we've put careful thought into their design. We had originally intended to use Quire, presented at Popple 2017, as our program representation for Vox. However, we found it difficult to state and prove properties about transformations of Quire programs, which led us to develop Squire. There are three key differences between Squire and Quire. First, Squire refers to qubits using concrete indices. In other words, natural numbers that index into the global qubit register. This makes it trivial to map a gate argument to the right column and row in the denoted matrix. It also means that disjointness and well typedness are syntactic. We can tell if two gates apply to different qubits, or if a single gate application uses the same qubit twice, simply by comparing the arguments. Second, we keep the unitary portion of Squire separate from the full language, allowing us to largely avoid the more complicated density matrix semantics, which is necessary to reason about programs that include measurement. Finally, rather than leaving the semantics of ill-typed programs undefined, we define their semantics to be the zero matrix. This allows us to avoid cluttering theorems with preconditions about well typedness. These differences between Squire and Quire make it easy to prove properties about Squire program transformations. And it turns out that they make source program proofs easier too. We have firmly verified a range of textbook quantum algorithms in Squire, from quantum teleportation to quantum phase estimation, a key component of Shor's factoring algorithm. We didn't design Squire to be a source level programming language, but in reality, many quantum algorithms, like those listed on the slide, are described using circuits, which makes them easy to encode in Squire. For more details on the benefits of using Squire for source program proofs, see our draft, Proving Quantum Programs Correct, available on archive. Our primary purpose for developing Squire was to have a suitable intermediate representation for Vox, our verified optimizer for quantum circuits. Vox optimizations are cock functions over Squire circuits, which are later extracted to OCaml. We proved that all optimizations are semantics preserving. And in some cases, we prove additional properties that say that the output program satisfies some machine constraints. Most of Vox is verified implementations of optimizations for nominal which range from simple people optimizations to more interesting non-local optimizations. But we also include a few optimizations over programs that include measurement to stress test our semantics for full square programs. Another 2100 lines of Vox is reusable, verified functions for manipulating square programs. Functions we provide include finding the next gate acting on a qubit, propagating a gate using cancellation and commutation rules, and replacing a subprogram with an equivalent program. Finally, we have 2100 lines for verified circuit mapping transformations. Here's an example of an optimization that uses our library functions for propagating a gate with cancellation and commutation rules. In this optimization, called X propagation, the goal is to move all X gates to the end of the circuit, canceling them when possible. We first apply a commutation rule that says that an X gate can commute through a two qubit gate. We then apply a cancellation rule that says that adjacent X gates can be deleted, and so on. This optimization is used as a pre-processing step by Nomadol. It preserves semantics because each application of a circuit equivalence leaves the overall matrix denotation unchanged. We can prove this property by induction on the structure of the input program. Using our Vox library functions, this optimization is implemented in about 30 lines. Optimizations that propagate X gates, like X propagation, rely on many small circuit equivalences, like those shown on the slide. Verifying these equivalences ultimately boils down to proving the quality of matrix expressions, which can be tedious. We provide automation for such proofs using what we call grid normal form. 
Consider the equivalence shown here, which says that an X gate commutes with the target of a CNOT gate. Per our semantics, verifying this equivalence requires proving the equality shown here, where the apply one and apply two terms expand as follows. Here, sigma x is the x matrix, and I am using p and q as stand-ins for more complicated arithmetic expressions involving m, n, and d. What this all means is that what we need to prove is an equality between two matrix expressions involving addition, multiplication, and the tensor product. Our automation reduces such expressions to a grid normal form, where addition is on the outside, followed by tensor product, with multiplication on the inside. In this case, both sides of the equality above become the expression at the bottom of the slide, proving that the equality holds. Here's an example of an optimization that uses our library function for replacing a subprogram with an equivalent program. In this optimization, called rotation merging, we first identify subcircuits consisting of only RZ and CNOT gates. Then for each subcircuit, we look for RZ gates that act on the same logical state. In this case, the first and last RZ gates act on the same logical state. So we can combine them into a new RZ gate whose parameter is the sum of the original parameters. To see why this is the case, let's return the gates to their original position. Now say that the input to the RZ C0 subcircuit is the state ABC. RZ gates will not change this logical state. C0 gates will leave the logical state of the control unchanged and update the state of the target to be the XOR of the input states. So for example, after the first C0, the state of the first qubit is updated to be A, X, or B. The state of the second and third qubits remain the same. After the second C0, the state of the last qubit is updated to be B, X, or C, and so on. As we can see, in this subcircuit, both the first and last RZ gates are applied to the B logical state, which means that their effect can be combined into one gate. Rotation merging is the most sophisticated optimization by NOM et al. And in our evaluation, was one of the most effective at reducing gate count. Using Vox library functions, it is implemented in around 100 lines. As mentioned earlier, we also verify transformations that aim to satisfy machine constraints. For example, we have verified one transformation that addresses the issue of machines only allowing CNOT gates between certain pairs of qubits. Given an input program and a description of a machine's C0 connectivity represented as a graph, circuit mapping produces a program that satisfies a machine's connectivity constraints. The simplest way to transform a program to satisfy connectivity constraints is by inserting swap operations to move qubits to valid locations before each two qubit gate. For example, given the program C0 02, and the linear three qubit architecture shown here, we can produce an equivalent program that respects machine constraints by performing a swap between zero and one, followed by a CNOT between one and two. We proved two properties of our circuit mapping routine. First, the output program satisfies the machine constraints. Second, the semantics of the output program is equal to the semantics of the original program up to a permutation of qubits. To evaluate Box, we compared it against industrial compilers Qiskit and Tket, research compiler Pizix, and the compilers presented in NOM et al. and AMI et al., none of which are verified. As we are evaluating a subset of the optimizations available in NOM et al., our goal was not to beat these tools, but to demonstrate that the optimizations we've implemented and verified are on par, on par with unverified tools, showing that we need not sacrifice performance for correctness. We evaluated Box on a set of 28 programs with 45 to several thousand gates and five to 96 qubits. The programs all use the universal gate set CNOT HST, where S and T are phase shift RZ gates with arguments pi over two and pi over four. This is a standard benchmark set that has been used to evaluate several quantum optimizers. We measured effectiveness in terms of total gate reduction 
and T gate reduction, both of which are common metrics in the literature. Vox's runtime on these benchmarks is in the same ballpark as existing tools. We have not made the optimizer unusably slow by implementing and verifying it in Coq. In fact, Vox is faster than the Python-based tools Qiskit, Tcat, and Pizzix. Vox is also as effective at reducing gate count as we expected, given that we implemented a subset of Namadal's optimizations. The takeaway here is that the optimizations we implemented and verified are powerful, and actually more powerful than what is available in industrial compilers. Most importantly, we are confident that Vox never performs transformations that change the semantics of the input program. None of these other tools are formally verified, which means that there may be cases where they optimize an input program incorrectly. In fact, some of these other tools have been found to do just this. This table shows the full results on all 28 benchmarks. The red boxes indicate that the relevant optimizer produces an inequivalent output when optimizing the marked input circuit. So, these boxes indicate some bug in the, in the nom et al and amy et al optimizers. These errors were found by nom et al and Kissinger et al using translation validation. And they go to show that writing circuit optimizations is hard. Mistakes are made even in published papers. We have used Kissinger et al's translation validator on all of Vox's outputs from these benchmarks as a sanity check and found no errors. However, translation validation is not an end-all solution. Nominal's approach to translation validation is not scalable. To check for equivalence, they simulate the unoptimized and optimized programs on different inputs and check for equality. Simulating a quantum program requires resources exponential in the number of qubits. Kissinger et al's approach is more scalable. In their case, validating the results amounts to running the physics optimizer but their approach is not guaranteed to succeed given any two equivalent programs. It works well for this benchmark set using the optimizations we evaluated, but it is not effective on other benchmarks we tested, described in the full version of our paper, and it may fail to validate optimizations that are too different from those available in physics. In summary, we have presented Squire, a small quantum intermediate representation, and Vox, a verified optimizer for quantum circuits. Our Vox framework is powerful enough to verify state-of-the-art optimizations, and our support for reasoning about Squire programs has allowed us to verify classic quantum algorithms like quantum phase estimation and Grover search. Future work includes implementing and verifying new optimizations, such as those available in current quantum programming frameworks like Qiskit, verifying larger and more interesting quantum algorithms like Shor's factoring algorithm, and verifying other parts of the software stack such as compilation from high-level languages to circuits, or even quantum simulators. Our code is all available online. We encourage you to check it out. Thanks for listening.